Hello, hello. Welcome to Heather Shaw is Kidding, the first episode. I'm so excited. My God, it's a long time coming. I'm excited to have this podcast. Uh, I'm excited to talk about all the hot topics with you, baby. Can't wait. I do have to say up front, this is a comedy commentary podcast. It's in the name, so please don't get mad at me if I say things that are a little bit wild. Uh, I'm not going to say anything crazy, you know. Did Epstein kill himself? I don't know. That's not up. Let, let's, let, we'll move on. But do you know what I'm saying? This is just comedy commentary. Don't get too offended. Uh, and don't sue me if I'm talking about you. I'm, I doubt the people that I'm talking about in pop culture, politics are listening. Uh, but if this does get back to them, I have nothing. Please don't sue me. I have Jim Carrey's face. You can take that off my hands. Please. Please, dear God, take that off my hands. I've heard it since I was eight years old. Uh, I do look a bit like Jim Carrey. It doesn't bother me. Um, sometimes I get DMs from angry men, you know, who are misplaced anger, right? They're angry at their mother or girlfriend or they're angry that they're secretly gay. And they message me and say things like, hey, get your own fucking face. And it's like, thanks, Kyle. I'll get right on that. All right. Um, I'm excited for this podcast. Like I said, everything is a joke. Everything is alleged because I am later on in this podcast, we're going to talk a little bit about P. Diddy. Okay. And uh, that guy's got some uh, red lipstick on his hands that may be blood. So I hope he doesn't come for me. Uh, I think it's a little bit big headed to think that P. Diddy will ever hear this. But if he does, you know, he's got time on his hands. He's not doing much. He's just hiding. Uh, I hope it doesn't get back to him. I hope he doesn't take me out. Not that he's taken out anybody. But not that he hasn't not taken out anybody. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Uh, I'm excited. I called this podcast Heather Shaw is Kidding because that is my Instagram handle. It is Heather Shaw is Kidding. It's a fun play, I thought, on the whole Jim Carrey having a TV show at one point called Kidding. Uh, me being a comedian uh, who kind of looks like Jim Carrey. So I thought it'd be fun to have that account name Heather Shaw is kidding. And it just moved into this podcast name. It's just easier. I did have an old Instagram account, uh, that, uh, got deleted off of Instagram. I thought it was a, a big deal back then. I think it was July, 2021, maybe. Um, I was a little bit I I popped a little on TikTok. I started getting a following on Instagram and then Instagram deleted the account. And every day I am terrified that that's going to happen again. This was so, this was July, 2021. I had an account. I think it was just my TikTok handle, which is like Heather Shaw, a lot of W's in there. Um, And I think I was up to like 50,000 followers, which was a big deal to me. Now I've got an absurd amount of followers and it's, I'm terrified. I live in terror every moment. But back then I had about 50,000 followers. Uh, I was feeling good. I didn't realize the power of Instagram and uh, the reach and how if you make a joke on there, it could really come by, back to bite you in the ass. And it did. I don't want to say that it was Lena Dunham's fault, but I think it was Lena Dunham. Who, who took my Instagram down. Allegedly. Do you see what we're doing here, guys? Alleged. This could all be a fake story, I'm telling you. It's not. Um, what had happened was, so I had this account, 50,000 followers. One day in like, I don't know, I think it was June or July, 2021. Little, it, people were still in the COVID times. Uh, people were going a little crazy. I think it probably got to Lena a bit. She posted... These pictures she took of herself, like these self, these selfies, but she was laying down, so she had like timed the the camera to, and they were a little cringy. And it's okay; it was a cringy time. COVID was a cringy time for us all. We all did cringy things in COVID. Some of us got COVID. Cringe. Um, so they were a little cringy, right? So I thought it would be funny to share those photos that she posted on her main account to my Instagram story, with the caption. I think I'm straight now. That was it. It was just fun. It was just a stupid goof. Lena Dunham posts these weird photos. And I said, well, I think I'm straight now. You know, meaning that like, I'm, this is so, I can't get into this. I'm now straight. Do you know what I'm saying? And uh, (laughs) within like an hour, I was looking at who had viewed the story. People were, people were laughing at it. 
And I saw that Lena Dunham had viewed the story. And I was like, oh, shit. I never want to make people feel bad with my comedy, but I'm also in the mindset of, like, nobody is looking at my comedy. Do you know what I mean? I just realized that something is not right with my ring light. Hopefully you're just listening to this audio only. There we go. Huh? Look at that. You can see me. Um, I just, I don't want to make people feel bad, but this is the thing with comedy is, like, sometimes somebody's going to take a punch, you know? And uh, if it's the creator of Girls, I don't feel as bad. Uh, It's not like I'm, you know, making fun of a little person who has cancer. It's Lena Dunham. She's not a little person and she doesn't have cancer that I know of. So she saw the story and, uh, boy, I tell you, within an hour, within an hour or two of her seeing that story, my Instagram account was completely deleted, wiped. I think I received uh, an email from Instagram saying, you know, um, community guidelines or something like that. It didn't name Lena Dunham specifically, but who else would have the power to view a comedian's story and then get TikTok or get Instagram to delete that account completely. I mean, completely. I couldn't recover it. I, I mean, there were some of my friends were like, I know somebody in Instagram and it was just like turned out to be like a janitor that just worked in the Instagram building. So they couldn't help. Uh, and it, I just lost that account and I learned a lesson and I got dunnumed. I got dunnumed. Lena got me. And you know what? I don't even, I, I do not, I think it's easier to say it now, now that I've got my Insta, I've got another Instagram account and it's doing really well. Please, dear God, don't let anybody delete it. Uh, but I look back at it now and it's a funny story. I don't, I don't have anything against Lena Dunham. I love girls. Uh, I don't think she did anything creepy. I know people are going to come for me on this one. I don't think she did anything that creepy in her art. Remember she had that memoir where she talked about like finger blasting her sister. Listen, I don't know. Kids are kids. I, I, I'm, I'm not here to, I'm not the judge. I'm not the jury. I don't care. I still like Lena Dunham. I, and I don't have proof that it was her, but it's just, it's very, it's a coincidence that within an hour of her seeing that, that story of me making fun of her and saying that she, her photos were so bad that they turned me straight, um, that my Instagram got wiped. Still a fan of her. I hope she's doing well. Uh, no hard feelings. If I didn't have an Instagram account with the amount of followers I had now, I'd probably, I would probably not be a fan of her. Let's be honest. But it's all water under the bridge now, baby. I've got God, I don't know. I've got a lot of followers on Instagram and not to, not to brag about it. It's, it's a lot of, a lot of people that don't like my comedy. I'm sure of it. Cause then they see a video I post later on. That's my comedy. And they go, just get, stick to the Jim Carrey stuff, cunt. And it's like, okay, well, I'm also a person. It's a lot of people that are religious or, um, closeted rednecks that don't like my humor because it hits too close to home in their, in their anus. Uh, but you know, I'll take what I can get. I got followers. It it feels good, but it's also like I'm a little muted on Instagram. It feels good to have a podcast now because on Instagram, I feel a little muted. Uh, last Father's Day, I thought it would be funny. Again, comedian. I like to do things that are funny. Sue me. Don't sue me. I have nothing. Uh, I thought it'd be funny last Father's Day to post a picture of Jeffrey Epstein and say, Happy Father's Day to my one and only dad. I haven't seen him in a while, and I miss him, and I hope he's well. Love you, pops. Something like that. And uh, boy, were people angry. And I didn't, I think I kept, I, Instagram didn't delete it, I deleted it. I think I kept it up for maybe two hours. And people were like, this is, this is crazy. This is ridiculous. How dare you? Children were touched. Um, but I thought it was funny. I mean, I thought that was a really, I might do something else for Father's Day. I like to do Father's Day, Mother's Day uh, gags. But I just don't feel like I can be as funny as I want to be, especially on TikTok. I mean, I feel like I have to be corny if I want my videos to stay up. So it's it's like I can just do Jim Carrey faces or I can dull the things that I find funny, really dull them down to like what sensitive people or maybe just, 
maybe I just have fucked up humor. Um, but I do, anytime I post videos that I think are super funny on TikTok, they do get deleted. <laughs> they do get reported. And it's like, man, I don't, I just, you know, TikTok is not some, some place that somebody that's super into comedy, only people that are super into comedy is going, you know, it's everybody. It's everybody. It's just the general public is on there. So you're gonna, you know, offend some people with your comedy. But I, I just, I think the reporting thing, it, it freaks me out and I'm surprised that TikTok hasn't deleted my account yet. But I, I, again, I've pulled back. I pull back a lot. Um, I've pulled back a lot on Instagram. I've pulled back. You're not really seeing the full thing, which is why I have Patreon now, you know. Uh, join my Patreon. I'm going to be posting um, videos that either got removed or that I made and then never posted because I was scared they were going to get removed. Uh, yeah, but shout out to Lena Dunham. Shout out to my Instagram. My Instagram is Heather Shaw is kidding. Just like the show. It's so easy. Follow me over there. Um, I'm still funny. I just, I just can't be as funny as I want to be. Uh, the funniest thing that happened this week that I think is I live in Lexington, Kentucky. Um, hold your applause. Oh, you're not applauding. Okay. Uh, I thought that was, you were just farting. Great. Uh, yeah, I live in Lexington, Kentucky because I'm a lesbian who fell in love with a woman who lives in Lexington, Kentucky. So I moved from Austin, Texas to Lexington, Kentucky. And, uh, it's not bad. I thought if it was podunk and awful, I wouldn't be here. I would say, I love you, but not that much, honey. But it's not bad. It's cute. But uh, the University of California this week <laughs> released a report that very boldly claimed the gayest state in the country <laughs> is Kentucky. That's what they said. The University of California, the Los Angeles School of Law Williams Institute, did a, uh, did a report studied their data real well might i add these are these are you know, college college people you know college students or i don't know who the fuck did this report but they came out and said kentucky is the gayest state in the country with their whole chest they said that yep our data finds that kentucky is the gayest state and nobody nobody said wait a minute let's rerun that data again they all just said, no, this is it. The computer doesn't lie. I feel like they just went to chat GPT and typed in what is the gayest state. And then the AI in chat GPT just took that figuratively as like, what is the gayest state in the country? Oh, God. The lamest state is probably Kentucky. They didn't take it literally. I don't know how they got their data, but their data is fucking their data. Their data is fucking wrong. They came out, so they were they released that, and a day or two after they released the gayest state is Kentucky, they came back and said, so um, it turns out that that was completely fucking wrong. <laughs> I know. I don't know what happened. That is wild. Like, no fucking shit. Kentucky is not the gayest state, unless you mean figuratively. Uh, the gayest state... I can't believe they looked at the data and didn't go like, wait a minute, not California, not New York, not some glory hole gay bar in Alabama. The gayest state is actually Oregon, which makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. It's not fucking Kentucky. And I just love that they, they just ran that, that, the data once it came out with Kentucky and they said, good to go. There is no fucking way in the world. Kentucky is full of maybe some down lows. They should release a report. The uh, the most down low spot. That's got to be like Mississippi, Alabama, Kentucky. A lot of re confused rednecks. You know what I mean? Banging their wives, closing their eyes, pretending it's Neil Patrick Harris. That queer. Uh, yeah, so shout out to the University of California for not proofreading any of the data for literally doing the bare minimum, which is what any college wants of you and advocates. So they were doing it right. They really, they, they hit the nail, nail on the head. The gayest state. Kentucky has some gays in it, I'm sure. Um, gay people are born in Kentucky, but they usually leave. 
I moved here because I wanted to be the second gayest person in Kentucky. Uh, the first gay, the first gayest person in Kentucky is Mitch McConnell. Uh, that man is f- uh, just flaming, and, and he's tired. He's a tired queen. He's freezing left and right, playing freeze tag, and winning. You know, uh, no, Mitch, Mitch, Mitch isn't gay. If Mitch was gay, you know, he'd get his shit together. Old Mitchy McConnell, I love you. I don't really, but I'm gonna say that because you don't know if I'm kidding or not. Um, speaking of gay, George Santos is, uh, existing on Cameo. It's been beautiful to watch. Uh, I want him to be a judge on RuPaul's Drag Race. And I want him to also be a contestant. I want him to go back and forth. I want him to have, uh, everything he wants in life, but not really. He's an awful person. He's also a scam artist. There's nothing like a gay guy scam artist. Um, I was listening to a podcast earlier this week about a, a wedding scam artist. Uh, I don't really remember what it was called. It w- wasn't that exciting of a podcast. I didn't even finish it. I don't even think anything came of it. But uh, this guy, Michael Esposito, he's a, he's a wedding planner scammer. But he was a gay guy. So it was really fun. It's fun when there's a gay guy scamming you. Because you kind of feel like gay guys are judging you no matter what. So when there's, it's easier for them to scam you because you're just going to believe what they say. Because you just don't, you don't want them to hate you when they're just like, honey, please let me do what I'm doing. They're so, you know, gay, gay guys are intimidating. Um, I got roasted in my early twenties by a lot of gay men. Rightfully so, you know, you can't wear flannel underwear. And I learned that the hard way. Um, you know, my music, Ani DeFranco listening to around gay, around gay men, you're going to get flamed. Gay men are going to say, honey, do you need me to call somebody? This music is atrocious. Now put on Kesha and let's dance. That was my old 20s. Uh, a lot of people think that I'm much older than I am, but I, I promise. I was, I was in my 20s in 1912. It was a great time, and I don't know why Kesha was around, but she's a time traveler. I don't know. George Santos, um, I want him to be the first male housewife on a real housewives installment he would bring the drama he is good at that isn't he indicted on stuff i don't really follow him that much um there's just funnier queens he's he's up there but once you have trixie mattel it's hard to follow any other queens i thought george santos also wasn't out but apparently he's out because that would have just made so, so much sense for him to also lie about not loving dick just being like no i i love vagina the lips the way they fold in the yeast they collect I love it and I want to lick it up but I think he's out I think he's an out and proud log cabin Republican I also love that he ran Republican like he didn't even trust his own kind to vote for him and somehow he got voted by fucking Republican Uh, look this guy deserves something we need to give him something we don't need to let like have him passing laws but he does need a, a judge guest spot on RuPaul's Drag Race at least I mean, that's hard to be an insane gay man scammer and to win the Republican race in your state. You deserve something. Um, Him and Jussie Smollett should get together and just start dating and fucking. Just scamming their way through. We've been attacked. (laughs) That's just (laughs) every week they just come out with a new we've been attacked story. God, I would love it. Where is Jussie Smollett? 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 I don't know. Um, good luck to George Santos. I don't know if he's going to jail. I don't know what he's been charged with. It would be funny if the Republican Party just charged him with being a faggot. <laughs> if the Republican Party was just like, yeah, your crime is, uh, you are an extreme bottom and a messy bottom at that. Literally and figuratively. You have shit running out of, on your pants. And also you can't, you know, you can't keep your grifts together. He did say that his mom was in 9-11, which is like, that's got to be something you can fact check so easily. I will say the funniest, this is the thing with scammers. This is why Trump, George Santos, these guys are fucking funny. They are so, and it's so enraging because, you know, they're awful human beings, but they. this is my thing. I got to separate the art with the artist. You know what I mean? Trump is fucking funny. The things he's done, the things he said are just so funny. George Santos 
when he said that he was Jewish or he was of Jewish descent and somebody said to the effect of like, no, you're not, you're, you're not. And he said, well, I'm a Jew ish. That's fucking funny to be like, well, I'm Jew ish. You know what I mean? Like, that's clever. These guys should go into stand up. They shouldn't be trying to ruin our lives with anti-abortion laws or whatever they're fucking doing. I don't know what they're doing. And I don't think that you should trust any politicians ever, just so you know. I don't care if it's Bernie Sanders in a rocking chair talking about socialist ideas. Don't trust him, okay? Don't, don't trust politicians. Pretend every politician is George Santos because George Santos is just loud about his grifts and scams, okay? That's where he fucked up. He was loud about it. But, you know, the insider trading and the other grifts and scams these people are doing, they're quiet about it and they're smart and they're smiling and, and looking at you and saying, we care about you. And then they're fucking doing whatever they want when you're not looking. George Santos was just loud about it and gay about it. If you're going to be gay, you got to be in the closet over on Congress, okay? Keep it in your pants until you get home. Then hit up Grinder. Oh, Georgie boy. I wish him the best. Um, I hope next year he's uh, the time person of the year. Wouldn't that be so fun? George Santos is the time person of the year. Who was it down to this year? It was down to Taylor Swift and uh, Vladimir Putin. And probably some other people. I don't know. I could fact check myself here, but would that be fun? Time person of the year. I'm 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 doing it now because I'm uh I don't have a producer. It's just me, baby. Um, all right. Who do we have here? We have uh Taylor Swift, obviously, a Chinese president. I'm not gonna attempt to pronounce that name. I have American education, I know nothing. The Trump prosecutors, okay. I mean, what are we doing? Barbie, that's a good one. Not a person, but okay. Um, king Charles III, which I could have swore was a dog, but I think it's just the king. And then Jerome Powell. Okay, well, that, no, clearly Taylor Swift. Is, it's like Taylor Swift and Barbie against all of the evil men in the world. And they're like, well, I guess we got to go with Swift. Honestly, I would have given it to Taylor Swift. I mean, she was fucking amazing this year billions of dollars and people still love her and treat her like she's, you know, you know, she's at the end of the day, she's a billionaire guys. Let her take the private jet. Okay. When pro professional athletes are going to your show and saying, how the fuck are you doing that day in and day out? Like, how are you doing that every night? The stamina you must need when professional like NFL players are saying that about your show, the way they were about Taylor Swift, you deserve to be a fucking billionaire and flying on a fucking private jet. And you know, ruining the environment whatever the environment's already ruined let taylor swift shit on it a little bit more um i heard that she and by heard i mean i saw a tiktok because that's a new thing right anytime you say you know I, I was reading an article no i just saw a tiktok um but i i saw an uh a tiktok about her training for the the era's tour it was her supposedly allegedly who knows but it said that she was running on a treadmill every day for three hours while running through her her show list her songs which is just fucking insane um but uh, i mean what else is she gonna what else does she have to do you know pet her cats i don't know i will say this uh i noticed that taylor swift posted about her being the time person of the year which of course you would how amazing um and her caption on it was, time told me that I was to be the person of the year. This is not how she talks, but whatever. She she has a more lesbian affectation. She's got like rich lesbian vibes, allegedly. Um, sure, she loves sucking that Kelsey cock. Oh boy, Heather, you're going to get canceled. But she said, uh, the caption was, time, time asked me if I want to be the person of the year. And I said, can I bring my cat? <laughs> Because the cover of uh, of the time uh, photo shoot of her being the person of the year is her and her cat on her shoulders. And if that doesn't tell you that Taylor Swift is the biggest lesbian in the fucking world, that she was worried about it, whether her cat would be involved in the cover of the time person of the year photo shoot, then I don't know what to tell you. If you are still out here, and I'm not a, I'm not a huge, like, I don't delve into it. I'm never like, you know, going down a rabbit hole of, of Reddit threads about w whether Taylor Swift is gay or not. I don't think about it. I just know. It's 
kind of like believing in God. You just know he's not real. Um, the fact that she had her cat on to me says, hey, everyone, I am a faggot. I'm a huge faggot. And you are still believing that I would date a professional football player. I don't buy that her and Travis Kelsey are a thing. I'm sorry. I know a lot of people are going to say that I'm cynical or I just want her to be gay. I don't care. I'm not, I'm not a, tra- I've never been a, tra- I think she's a pretty woman, but I've never been like, oh, Taylor Swift is so hot. The only person I think is hot is my fiance forever and ever. Amen. She's so gorgeous. Taylor Swift. I've never, I've never wanted her to be gay. I don't, I'm not like, this is what I want for her. This is what I'm projecting on her. I just know she's just gay. Allegedly. This is all alleged. These are my opinions, guys. Comedy commentary. Eh? Don't sue me, Swift. Don't take my jet. Um, I, uh, you'd think that she'd be a Jets fan with all the jets she's flying on. I don't know. Uh, I think she's gay. I don't buy into her and Travis Kelsey. I just don't. I think that there's too many instances of them in public doing very, like, remember when the first game she went to uh, of Travis's, the first Chiefs game she went to, afterwards, they just drove off in a convertible together. Like, like that's fucking real life. And everybody buys it. That is not real. I mean, I don't think that... Maybe they want to put their relationship on blast. Maybe. But these are two of the most prominent people in their, their industries. Uh, you'd think they'd want a little bit of privacy if it wasn't a publicity stunt. It just reeks publicity stunt to me. These two driving off in a fucking convertible together to go talk about how much they love women, probably. You know? I don't think Kelsey is gay. I think Kelsey just wants his bag. And I think it's fucking amazing that he can be attached to Taylor Swift. Anybody would sign up for that. You know what I mean? If Taylor Swift goes to anybody and says, do you want to be my fake boyfriend? Will you go fake study with me? They're going to be like, fuck yeah, bitch. Give me that bag. You know, and, and uh, remember after uh, the show in, I don't know, fucking Brazil, where one of her fans died, uh, her hair blonde? No, I'm kidding. She did. She died. She fully died. Uh, she ran off stage at the end of her, her show in Brazil, I think it was. I don't know. I'm not, you know, I'm not, a, I love Taylor Swift's music. I'm not a huge Swifty. I just know these things. She ran off and went up to him and kissed him right in the public view. And he was like literally three feet in front of an enclosed area that they could have been making out in or meeting up in. But no, they had to be in public. Come on, people. Get it together. Am I I cynical or are you gullible? Am I cynical or are you guys naive? This is what I, this is the game I play in my head all the time. Am I the asshole or are you just like, just naive? Are you just, will you just believe what is out there? These people have the most insane team surrounding them um and it just seems a little too perfect but uh you know the the naysayers will say the naysayers will say why would taylor swift need any more publicity why would she continue to be in the closet or what is it what's in it for them to fake it they've already they're already the biggest stars ever they already have all the money. And now I'll tell you something that's fun about people that have mon- a lot, a lot of money. Uh, they don't stop caring about money once they have a lot of money. It never ends. You know what I mean? LeBron James was asked about, you know, why he's playing so well in the in- in-season tournament. And he said, because it's all about the 500K. This guy's a billionaire. And LeBron James is like, because I want that $500,000, which is like a quarter to him now. He's a billionaire. And he's chasing 500K. Like, people that have money, they don't stop thinking about money. Um, They never do, and that's why they have so much fucking money, you know. Um, But also, you know, Taylor Swift was born a little rich. But good for her. I'm a big fan of Taylor Swift. No hate towards her. Uh, Will she ever come out if she is indeed gay? I don't know. I think, you know, I think she'll do it in, like, her, her Stevie Nicks era. Because she's so fucking big right now, bigger than she's ever been, that maybe in her 60s or 70s she'll come out. And you know the photo that she's going to come out with is going to be her and her fucking cat. And everyone's going to be like, oh, we didn't see the signs. Yeah, back in 2023 on the Time Person of the Year cover, she was cuddling her cat. 
She's gay, allegedly. This is just what I believe, just my opinions. Uh, obviously, I'm wrong. Obviously, uh, her and Travis would probably get married. Um, because gay people have never done that before. I just, I don't know. I, I think maybe she doesn't come out because she's scared of alienating her her audience. I mean, she's got a huge fucking audience. I don't know that it would, her numbers would drop off that much, but, you know, whatever. Good for her. I'm, I, I love Taylor Swift. I, you know, no hate. Uh, my opinion is just that it, it just seems a little fake, and I still think she's gay. I don't know why I think that. I just... The amount of some somebody um, I was talking to to one of my uh, soon to be in laws because now that I'm engaged, and they said, "Oh, she's just a man eater," and I just I just don't I don't know I don't think that's true. You know who's a woman eater though? Leo DiCaprio. That guy runs through him. I was thinking the other day, Leo either is shooting blanks or has paid for a lot of abortions. There's no way that man sleeps around that much with young, fertile women and doesn't have a child? And not one of one of the women he's knocked up has kept it? Is it? Did he get a vasectomy at the age of 12? How did this happen? He doesn't have one. Drake has a child out of wedlock. Or whatever. Not out of wedlock. That sounds gay. Gayer than it needs to. Drake has a child. An oopsie child. Like, let's be real. That was an oopsie child. That was not a planned, you know, Drake doesn't want a kid. He's got a child that he's teaching to be black, which I love about. If you see Drake's kid, he, he looks like, you know, a, he's so cute, but it's like, he's definitely half white, Drake. Uh, show him our culture. Introduce him to Hellman's mayonnaise. You know, make him a good pasta salad. Put the captions on when he's watching BET. Okay? Introduce him to the white people culture. Um... But Drake, yeah, Drake's trying so hard to make his son black. It's great. I mean, he's half black. He doesn't have to try, but he's constantly putting him in cornrows and making him rap on his songs. And I don't know. It'll just be funny if Adonis grows up to just be like an accountant. Just a white accountant. What's he going to do? I don't know. But um, that was me trying to burp. A mouth fart, if you will. I don't know what I got. I, I don't know why I got on, on to Drake. I was talking about somebody else and, uh, and, and I apologize. I'll have to go back to that. Uh, never. That's just a thought that's out of my mind. You know what I mean? All right, let's get into, uh, what I really wanted to talk about on this episode, which was, uh, really the most intriguing thing to me and, and what I am scared about. I am scared about having a hit taken out of me after talking about this. I'm not a big deal. Luckily, I don't think, uh, if you hear don't share this, don't share this podcast episode with anybody. This is just for us. Let's talk about P. Diddy. Let's talk about what's going on with P. Diddy, man. Um, God almighty, he scares the shit out of me. And I'm, I'm not going to say this. This is true. I have never liked P. Diddy. I have not. There's some celebrities where I just, I don't fuck with them. P. Diddy is one of them. Um, he is fuck. First of all, the man doesn't do anything on his own. It's always just him riding the coattails of very successful people. He attaches his name somehow. He's like, you know, and then he takes them out allegedly. You know what I mean? Where the fuck, you know, what happened with Biggie? Is that just what happened with Kim Porter? Are we just going to gloss over all these people that are in Diddy's orbit that just he's like the Kevin Spacey of hip hop. You know what I mean? Kevin Spacey had multiple allegations for sexual assault. And uh, boy, none of those people are around now, huh? What is it, four people that were killed right before they were to testify against Kevin Spacey and his creepiness? One, one got hit by a car. One died by suicide. Uh, one was cancer, I believe. People just dropping like flies a week before they're set to testify against Kevin Spacey. And nobody, no one says, huh, it's just weird, huh? God, he got lucky. Spacey got lucky. Here's the thing, though. Again, I separate the art and artist. I will always love House of Cards, American Beauty. I love Kevin Spacey's work. I like his work on screen. I don't like his work off screen. I think the touch, you know, banging 16 year old boys or whatever he's doing and, and, and killing them when they speak up. I don't like that work, 
But boy, House of Cards. I love House of Cards. I'm not, I, you know, I'm still going to listen to R. Kelly's Ignition. I'm going to bump it, baby. And I'm also happy that he's in prison. It's a win-win. But truly with P. Diddy, I can say there's nothing of P. Diddy that I, there, I don't, there's no, none of his art, even making the band, I hated. You know, Danny Kane was great, but he treated them like shit. And he was also a giant monster douchebag on that show. Of course, it's a show. It's, you know, he's supposed to be, but. Uh, the shooting, remember the shooting that he was involved with with J-Lo was there and it was a whole, and somebody else went down for, it was a whole fucking thing. Allegedly, P. Diddy didn't shoot some, it was a whole thing. And like, he's just a dark, there's dark energy around the guy. I've never not seen that. And also he doesn't contribute art. He doesn't contribute anything. He just kind of attaches his name and hovers around and then takes you out when he wants your money. Uh, he's a very, 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 very good businessman. Okay, it's it's almost you can't even say that Trump's a good businessman. He just Trump kind of knows the loopholes a little until he gets indicted. But like Diddy has always just kind of been really, really, really good at taking other people's money. I bet he kills in Monopoly and in real life. Okay, just kidding. Allegedly. Come on. Come back. It's all it's all just this is all just opinion, guys. So he's had these allegations. Uh, Cassie alleged that he did horrible things to her, drugged her, raped her. Um, And nothing says I'm not guilty quite like settling the day after the lawsuit is filed and made public. Nothing says I didn't do it like shut the fuck up, bitch. Here's the money. Go away and uh, take that lawsuit with you. Nothing says I'm innocent. Like I'll pay whatever you want. Just shut the fuck up. And he's a businessman. You'd think he'd want to, you know, not lose all that money unless he was very, very, very guilty of it. At this point, P. Diddy's been through a lot of name changes, huh? He's been through a lot. P. Diddy. He was, what, Puff Daddy originally? Puff. P. Diddy. Diddy. He's got to change his name again. He's got to be P. Diddler. That should be his new name. Everyone should call him that from now on. I think that's the name of the episode. P. Diddler. Uh, you know, for his alleged action, I think it's a great new name change. He thinks he's Prince. He's not. He's the Prince of Allegations. I'll give him that. Um, but P. Diddler, man, I like it. That's what he should be. On December 6th, he released a, a statement in all caps. Enough is enough. So he's saying no. Now he knows the meaning of no. Isn't that nice? He said no means no. With these allegations. Enough. I do not consent to. It's fun. Now he's learning about it. Now he he understands the concept of no. Enough. Anyways. Enough is enough. For the last couple of weeks. This is P. Diddy's statement. For the last couple of weeks. I have sat silently. Well you were sitting silently. And paying off people. Cassie. I have sat silently and watched people try to assassinate my character, which by the way, if anybody knows about assassinations, it's P. Diddy. Okay. So this guy knows what he's talking about. If you're going to assassinate his character, he's going to see that coming from a mile away. You know what I mean? Allegedly, this guy knows how to assassinate. So he, he can tell when you're about to assassinate him. Oh my God. I'm, you know what? I'm going to say it. I think P. Diddy had, had something to do with Abe Lincoln's death. If so, I think if anybody did, it's P. Diddy. I'm just going to say it. Uh, I've sat silently and watched people try to assassinate my character, destroy my reputa- reputation and my legacy. What is your legacy? Other than s- stealing money from people and riding on the coattails of very, very good rap legends such as Biggie, and then they die, and then you keep all the rights to their music and then you make money off of the music that you have of theirs that they put out into the world because they're artists and you're a soul sucking douche canoe. He is the hip hop's version of the Colonel for Elvis. Elvis had the Colonel hip hop has P Diddy. Uh, I don't know. I, 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 Justin Timberlake said it. What goes around comes around. And Justin Timberlake did say that first, by the way. He did not take that from anybody. It's not been a saying. It's time, man. It's time for his reckoning. Reckoning. What goes around comes around for sure. 
you know, P. Diddler is in hot water. I don't see him. This is the thing, though. People forget so easily and move on. Kevin Spacey had four, three to four accusers all die within a week of when they were set to testify against him. They all died. He never had to go to trial, I don't think. He never had to face those people in court, the people that he abused, sexually assaulted, whatever he did. And no one, and people moved on. P. Diddy has had suspicious activity around him for decades. And even with these allegations, I don't know what else is going to happen to P. Diddy. Will he be going to prison? I don't know. I mean, they put Cosby away and then took him out. They said, all right, he's done enough. Get out of here, you little rapist. Come out in the real world again. We miss you in your sweaters. P. Diddy's uh, baby mama. We need to talk about her. Kim Porter. People just let this happen, and then it, everyone just moved on. And it blows my mind. Kim Porter had three children by P. Diddy. Um, I think, I think uh, uh, a boy... No, they have a son, Christian Combs, and twin daughters. <sighs> so three kids by P. Diddy. Uh, I don't think they were ever married. I think they just had an on and off relationship from 1994 until 2007. And then it must have got contentious. Because in 2018, at the age of 47, Kim Porter died. She died of pneumonia. This is pre-COVID. So th- there's nobody out there being like, well, was she vaxxed? This is 2018. I think she on an off relationship with Diddy and this 47 year old former model. I mean, she's fit. You look at her pictures of her. She's beautiful. She's fit. Um, you know, dies of pneumonia. She gets flu like symptoms randomly out of nowhere and she dies of pneumonia. Three kids by P Diddy. What happened there? You know what I mean? And then you, you, you see the allegations with Cassie. It's like, this guy is dark energy, okay? He's, he's, he's not, he's the scary part. Um, and uh, boy, I just, it's just, it's all fishy and people just forget about it and then they move on. So hopefully seven people listen to this and then we just move on. But I do want P. Diddler to stick. I do think that's a great name for him. Um, I just, you know, We'll see what comes to those allegations. He's, he's had enough, he said. He's like, please stop taking my, you know, reputation. Your reputation's been trash for a while, sir. Ever since you made, you know, making the band was- walk across the fucking bridge to go get you cheesecake. Um, he's just, I, God. J- him and J-Lo deserve each other, I'll say that. J-Lo keeps going back to fucking Ben Affleck. He looks miserable, doesn't he? Every picture you see of Ben Affleck, it's like, he, you know, if he's not with J-Lo, somebody's going to come in and shoot his daughter. Uh, both, I don't know how many kids he has. They all look like Jennifer Garner anyways. Isn't that fun when that happens, when celebrities have kids and they all just look like the one parent? Like Reese Witherspoon, all of her kids just look like her. And Ryan Philippe, who I think cheated on her allegedly. I don't know. It's, it was, an, you know, early 2000s drama. Now just has to look at his kids and see his ex-wife. It's like Jennifer Garner. All of her kids look like her. It's great. Ben Affleck is just tortured every day looking at the wife he does not have anymore. It's surprising that they even got together. And now he just looks so fucking miserable with J-Lo. You know, he's just like, I love her ass and that is all. I cannot stand this woman. She is the bane of my existence and an awful human being. She is the female P. Diddy. I'm sorry, P. Diddler. Um, Boy... I just, I just don't know. I, the guy creeps me out. J-Lo freaks me out. She's a diva for no reason. One of the best videos ever is J-Lo going back to her former house, uh, her childhood house in New York City, and the new owner is out there, and she says, hi, you know who I am? And he's like, no. And she's like, I used to live here. And he's like, okay. Didn't recognize J-Lo. I mean, that's, that's amazing. You know that that's not scripted because she, she would never approve of that, some guy not knowing who I am. And he lives in my old home. It was great. It was beautiful. It was justice. TikTok is going well. Uh, I'm trying to, uh, I'm just going to put up uh, videos on TikTok. 
uh, from my podcast, I think. If you're not following me over there, it's fine. You've seen enough. Follow me on Instagram. I think Instagram's fun. I don't want to get Dunham. I love you, Lena Dunham. Please don't Dunham me. I blocked her. Can I be honest? I blocked her. I blocked her so quick. The minute I got more than 20,000 followers, I said, let me find that Lena Dunham and block her. Just in case. Just in case she still holds a grudge. I don't know. I don't hold grudges. I don't have a good memory. I can't hold grudges. You know, you could murder my mom, and in two years, I'm going to forget about it. So, you know, so like, I don't hold grudges, but I don't know what these people out there are doing. But, you know. I uh, Follow me on Instagram. Heather Shaw is kidding, just like this podcast. If you don't already, find me on MySpace. Because, um, I, I, I mean, I'd love to find my old profile on MySpace, to be honest. Before I go, I wanted to um, talk about a movie because I always like to wrap up with a little movie review I saw. I saw uh, this movie with my fiancé. I love saying that. It's gorgeous. Lily. I saw this movie called May, December. Uh, going into it, I didn't really know much about it, but I saw that Julianne Moore and Natalie Portman were attached to it, and immediately I was like, fuck yeah. They would never sign on, sign on to be in a movie that was absolute trash. It's Julianne Moore... And Natalie Portman, the two most amazing actresses. I love them. May, December was trash. I don't know what the fuck that movie was. What was the point of this movie? It was basically a um, fantastical take on the Mary Kay Letourneau and her, I don't know, I don't remember her, you know, child groom's name, Vili Villa Fanau or something. Uh, okay, I can look it up, but I'm not going to. It's not that important. And respect his privacy. He's been groomed and assaulted for years by Mary Kay Letourneau, who is now dead. Anyways, Julianne Moore plays a version of Mary Kay Letourneau in like the year 2015, you know, after everything. And she's got a family with with the guy she groomed and banged when he was 12 or 13. And Natalie Portman plays an actress who's uh, going to be playing Julianne Moore's character in an upcoming film. So she wants to study her. Uh, and it just gets, it's, it's a very weird, uh, movie. It's not very intriguing. Uh, the music choice, if you see this movie, please let me know your thoughts on the music choice. It, there's the strangest, like mid nineties drama music going on, uh, at random times. It makes no sense. I don't really, great acting. I'll give them that. You can't be disappointed in anything Julian Moore and Natalie Portman does acting wise. Great acting. You know what I mean? I would listen and watch them read the phone book. They're amazing actors. But the movie was just so not necessary. I've never thought about, I wonder what Mary Kay Letourneau's life is like now. She's dead, number one. Uh, Was she vexed? Uh, No, she was just a groomer. Uh, It would be funny if Mary Kay Letourneau became a dog groomer. You know what I mean? So then she could actually be walking around saying, oh, I'm a groomer. Um... It just, I don't know why they made the movie. Uh, It was fine. I don't really know. Nobody was really, I don't think people were clamoring for a Mary Kay Letourneau-esque story. Um, You know, it was nice to see the roles reversed. Usually it's a very Lolita-esque movie where Natalie Portman's the child. You know, remember The Professional? That one was kind of weird. Uh, but you know, it it was fine. I give it like a five out of 10 just because I didn't really care for it. Great acting. But other than that, I just did not care. I don't even know what, what it was. I think we saw it on Netflix or something. Um, but if you see that movie, let me know what your, what your, what your thoughts are. Cause I just don't see, I mean, what is next? A Casey Anthony movie? Actually, I would watch that. Who would play Casey Anthony? God, who would play Casey Anthony? Whoopi Goldberg? She'd be good. She'd be a good Casey. My name's Casey Anthony. Um, I don't know who would play Casey Anthony. I'll have to think about that. Maybe Natalie Portman again. Natalie Portman's too pure to play Casey. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Whoopi. Whoopi or Rosie O'Donnell. Rosie would kill it as Casey Anthony. I'm Rosie Anthony. Um, all right. I've got upcoming shows. I hope you enjoyed this first episode. I'm very excited. I feel good about it. We said some things, guys. I said some things and you listened. Uh, but boy, I hope you enjoyed those takes. I'm sorry if I offended you. Not really, but you know, I gotta say it. Um, I will be in Little Rock, Arkansas because, uh, I just want to feel miserable. No, I'm kidding. I'm going to Little Rock. I'll be at Looney Bin 
this upcoming weekend, the 14th, 15th, and 16th. All three days I'll be there at Looney Bin. I will be at the Tulsa, Oklahoma Looney Bin the following weekend. I believe it's the 21st through the 23rd. Um, and then I think that's it for dates until February. I'm going to take January off live performing, live dates, uh, and then I'll be back in it in February, going to Baltimore and uh, Batavia, Illinois. But please, comment or email me at heathershawiskidding at gmail.com and tell me where you'd like to see me perform so I can perf- I can book some shows. I never know where to go. I just kind of throw a dart at a map and hope it doesn't end up in, you know, Alabama. Join my Patreon if you'd like. Uh, the Patreon is patreon.com slash heathershawcomedy. Every week you will get a bonus episode of this podcast where I get personal. So it's not just me discussing hot topics. I kind of just talk more about what's going on in my life, any gripes, um, any any fun things going on. You know, we'll be talking about my engagement on this upcoming Patreon episode. It'll be a whole community. I'm going to be saying off-the-wall shit that I usually can't say in public. I'm very excited about that. I mean, it's nothing crazy. I'm not going to say, like, you know, Hitler was right. I would never. Uh, I You know, but it's just going to be, you know, un, un, uh, unfiltered. I just get to gripe and complain, maybe name drop. I'll tell you some some comics who I've worked with who are great. I'll tell you one comic who I absolutely can't stand. Uh, it's a male. Um, things like that. Join my Patreon. You also get, uh, we'll be doing one live stream a month on Patreon. Uh, and um, you'll get early access to shows, tickets, and merch. When I do a new mer- merch drop, you'll get early access to that. And then we got a little chat set up. Anybody can just chat. Uh, together on Patreon and talk about whatever you want to. Epstein didn't kill himself. Sure, send. Um, Alex Jones looks sexy without a shirt on, and that makes me sad. Send. Uh, Thank you so much for listening. Uh, You've been amazing. You didn't really say anything during this whole episode, so that's um, felt like I was just talking at you. (laughs) All right, I will. uh, I'll take. I'll see you later. Thank you for joining on this first episode. Follow me on Instagram, follow me on MySpace, follow me in real life and stab me if you want. All right, see ya.